Hello everyone, happy Monday, and welcome to another episode of Quandaries and Sundries. I hope you are doing well, had a great day, and a wonderful weekend. And if you didn't, I hope I can provide some entertainment to spice up your day and your Monday. So let's just hop right into today's stories. We have to start off once again with some virus news. Last week, I've talk, I talked multiple times about wild fowl and agricultural fowl and how the avian bird flu was spreading amongst them. And now pigs might be in trouble. And unlike avian bird flu, this virus might end up spreading to humans. So I'm a little more concerned. C. difficile is an extremely common disease that infects your intestinal system and can cause severe damage to your intestines and colon. It is spread by the bacterial Clostridium difficile and affects about half a million Americans every year, and the fatality rate is between 6 to 30 percent, or about 13,000 deaths every year. And the problem is every year it's increasing, the amount of cases. It also costs the United States healthcare system about a billion dollars every year, according to the Center for Disease Control. Another concerning statistic is the fact that according to some independent studies, close to 20,000 people in the last decade have gotten C. diff in a hospital setting during their stay. But that brings up a whole other concern that I probably will save for another time. But how do you get it? There are three ways. One, you touch surfaces that contain the bacteria and then you touch your nose and eyes like most colds and flus and stuff. Two, from uncooked food. Because 25 to 50% of all uncooked meat in the United States has been found to have the bacteria C. diff. So like always, it's important to make sure your meat is cooked according to the USDA's guidelines. Then the final way, number three. C. diff actually can be found naturally in some humans' digestive tracts. Just hanging around with the other microbes in your intestinal microbial mat and environment. But interestingly, it doesn't harm people until now. So usually there are antibiotics we can take to deal with the threat and prevent death or long-term damage. And same goes for livestock. We can also feed them antibiotics. But recently in the last few years, we have noticed an increase in genetic mutations in the C. diff bacteria in pigs that are making them resistant to all manners of antibiotics. And we are finding that the other microbes in our intestinal tracts are not evolving to withstand all the new antibiotics. And when they die off, the entire ecosystem of your gut goes out of whack. And when the balance is disturbed, that's when C. diff will become dangerous. New findings were actually recently revealed by the European Congress of Clinical Microbiology at Infectious Disease Conference in which over 500 pigs in Denmark were examined and compared to people in hospitals who had come down with C. diff. So both of them, both of those pools had C. diff. They found that 10% of those pigs had C. diff, and 100% of that 10% had genes that were beginning to develop antibiotic-resistant genes. And 70% of that had the full-blown resistance to the antibiotics, which means it's already starting to evolve and form more and more. So that 10% might turn into 20% in the next few years, and that's worrisome. But what about the humans? Well, of the over 900 patients observed, they found 13 cases where the human C. diff matched with general animal strains of C. diff. So they basically were the same as just a regular animal. You could say squirrel, you could say dog, whatever. But interestingly, they found 16 cases that directly match those they found in the pigs they were examining as well. In response to this entire issue, the United Nations has put out a global statement to various global world leaders on the agricultural dangers of overuse of antibiotics, especially in farm animals, as the more we use them, the closer we are to the point of no return, where C. diff and other bacteria and viruses will be resistant to all antibiotics and medicine. We actually need to re-examine the situation, though, to figure out other courses of action. Because we are aware of the statistics done in this recent study out of Denmark, 
but we don't know the way C. diff was transmitted between the pig subjects and the human subjects. So until the World Health Organization and the international medical community comes to a solution, I suggest always cooking your meat and always washing your hands. Now, I just want to end this story quickly by talking about something that interested me, and that was the whole fact that people were getting them in hospitals. And if people are getting them in hospitals, I, I, that, that really makes me question the sanitation of most hospitals in the world. And I think once we solve this issue, that's something we definitely need to look at as well. But that's an issue for another day. We have an outbreak possibly on our hands to take care of. Speaking of outbreak, let's end this episode on another possible outbreak being spread. Because the World Health Organization just put out a statement regarding a worldwide epidemic of hepatitis affecting the world's population of children under 16 years of age. So far, there have been over 160 cases affecting the countries of the United Kingdom, Ireland, United States, Spain, Israel, the Netherlands, Italy, Norway, France, Romania, and Belgium. 67% coming from the United Kingdom and Ireland alone. Now, as of right now, the international health community is rushing to find the cause. But as, a, but as of right now, the current hypothesis is that it could be spread through adenoviruses. What are adenoviruses? Well, they are basically a family of over 60 different viruses, ranging from the common cold to stomach bugs, neurological diseases, uh, even COVID in rare cases. They are basically the giant family tree of all viruses that we deal with and we all know on a regular basis. The easiest way to know that there are adenoviruses is that you can get them through contact with contaminated surfaces, droplets, and bodily fluids, so basically like most colds and flus. Now let's circle back around to hepatitis, which is a type of HIV, also known as human immunodeficiency virus, which means it attacks your immune system. And hepatitis especially attacks the liver's immune defenses, basically making your liver useless, causing liver failure. It is not something I'd love to go through. No, thank you. So far, the World Health Organization and the Center for Disease Control has been able to find the adenoviruses in a few children that suffered from damaged livers or complete liver failure in the United States. But for now, sadly, that isn't enough concrete evidence to officially call it a full-blown connection. Plus, as of right now, they don't know if it is because of an increase in awareness for hepatitis in children or the worst case scenario, an increase in the cases for hepatitis. As of now, the main course of action is testing kids and young adults with hepatitis for adenoviruses and praying that we can find a link. Because if you get hepatitis at a young age, you will most likely be stuck with it for the rest of your life. If you get it as an adult, your body can actually fight it off in most cases, and then you'll be immune from it and getting it from the rest of your life. But these kids... And all the other kids, if this turns out to be a true outbreak, hundreds of kids around the world will have to be put through the hell of this with their kidneys failing over and over throughout the lives, something I don't want to see kids have to suffer through, especially if this gets worse. So I hope we can solve this, because of as of right now, I bet it, it was spread through blood from transplants, because some of the kids in the United States received transplants and that's usually a good way for it to spread. But nevertheless, I will keep you posted on both of these stories and how they develop. And I pray these don't turn into bigger issues. I hate that I've had to keep bringing up to you all these diseases, viruses, and outbreaks. But nevertheless, no matter what happens and no matter how depressing, I'm always going to still deliver the news to you. So have faith in that. Well, that is all I got for today. I'd really appreciate if whatever platform you're listening to this on, whether YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or whatever audio platform my voice is transmitting to you through, please subscribe or follow me. And I love any feedback, so don't feel shy to tell me what you think and how I can improve your experience here. Thank you so much for listening, and do not forget to share this to anyone or all those in your life who could use a scientific moment in theirs. 
I hope you'll join me again next time for another episode of Quandaries and Sundries. Stay safe, stay sane, and stay healthy. This is Van Masterson signing off.